is that biologic plasma has to get there before it becomes distributable. But to make it through, you've got to be distributable, <laughs> which means you've got to be shareable, which means you've got to do the phase discipline, which means everything that cannot be distributed and be of service to all of DNA can't get on the radio station. <laughs> it's the beginning of an introduction to the physics of pure intention, how to get shareable, where coherence perfected is fractal. And we'll look at that tomorrow. We measure heart coherence. And we see that, indeed, only the shareable wave, the most perfect coherent one, can actually make it through the compression and become distributed. So, Uh, there has been an, a, an estimation of the PQRS and T wave of the EKG. You see, here's, just so everybody knows what she's talking about, PQR, I'm sorry, P, Q, R, S, and T. Now, if you look at the subcomponent, we know that the, and this was really more for tomorrow, but since you bring it up, we could have fun anytime, is that the ability of your heart to feel the galaxy is how perfectly it relaxes between beats. And if you spectrum analyze the EKG, if I spectrum analyze it a million samples per second between here and here, if I get an infinite Fourier series, your heart is hearing the stars, literally. And that relaxation is called fractal, and that's idealized by golden ratio. And here is an approximation of golden ratio. You see that golden ratio? In the PQRS and T complex. So that means that that, if you look at this, here is called perfect damping based on Fibonacci in physics, and here is the PQRS and T, and you see that analog, that it's actually relaxation perfected. You see? Yes. Which, and we're later going to see that that is called perfect damping is how nonlinear magnetic motors work. Yeah. Well, the word is a lot of charge, right? And which we defined earlier. We defined it earlier. When I listen to you, it sounds to me like this substance is, is, I don't know, it's called consciousness. Ubiquitous. You be quite us. Yeah. The <laughs> so electromagnetic spectrums come after this, this stuff. Well, the, we, we illustrated that the electromagnetic spectrum is the wavelength of charge. Simple. Any it's questions? That, it's that term charge that I've what Charge is the unified substance, substrate of the electromagnetic spectrum. Exactly. Well, uh, can I just say, what, can we try consciousness? Well, consciousness is not a word that would mean a lot in electrical engineering class yet. Whereas here we can define precisely what consciousness is when charge becomes fractal recursive. And by spectrum analysis, identify that using golden ratio and EEG, for example. I, I suppose I'm asking a question because um, electromagnetic spectrum uh, vector waves and nope. sound is a scalar wave. No, no, that's, that's wrong. The, the sound wave is just a lower frequency of the same charge as a phonon wave travels in water, for example. So in, 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 see, I think, what I think I hear is you're still thinking of two different substances. That's the problem. For example, this is a, a donut made of charge. The charge that's going this way, you could call that amperage. The charge that's going this way, you call that voltage. But that doesn't mean the electrical and the magnetic are separate. It just means that the part I measure going this way, I call amperage. The part I measure going this way, I call voltage. But it's the same stuff. Or you could say magnetic versus voltage. So the point is that there is only one substance. And charge is a pretty good name for it. And it yeah. fits physics beautifully. And yes, consciousness is the name for that part of the charge which is well distributed and centripetal, I would say. Well, this, see, this will cure the New Age woo-woo problem of saying, oh, well, that was an electric field, this is a magnetic field. That's schizophrenia. The same as the director of the Fermi lab, Adam Smasher in Chicago, he says, oh, I never mix my religion with my physics. He's a Jesuit, and that defines schizophrenia in my view. Uh, 
That's right. And once we, and people think that physics will make, you know, spirituality less loving. Wrong. Physics makes spirituality more loving. You understand now why the plasma field comes to you when you call it, if you have pure intention, because you are shareable as a wave. And that plasma is smart. You'll create the most inertia, yes. And a lot of people are using the word collapse, and it's very appropriate. But perfected collapse has only one geometry, and that's where we're going with this. So, and as Jenny is suggesting, so later today, when we begin to think about, you know, Inanna says, you know, if you can go into the underworld and come back in one piece, then therefore you are the heroine and you have, you know, healed the Nephilim and, 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 and now you're immortal. What does she really mean? It means the plasma in your aura became projective, went through the speed of light, got distributed, and it was so well distributable that something came back. And that perfectly insoluble something or other is what's called pure intention. But actually, it's that part of you that has something, has some symmetry that serves all of DNA. Except now we know what that is. It's a phase conjugate dielectric electric field that's very self-organizing. This is where later when we get into the sort of electrical engineering of all this that I find very, very fun. I kind of love this part. You know, I was in graduate school, University of Detroit, with the Jesuits. We were in a monastery garden, and they were teaching us Carl Jung, <laughs> right? You know, we were studying electrical engineering. There we are in the monastery garden, and they're teaching us Carl Jung in a collective unconscious. How does it work? Where's the dreaming go? Then years later, imagine how happy, how delighted I was. My friend Bill Donovan, who's helping us with things kind of dielectric circuits, points out this fabulous paper in the electrical engineering literature called Alice in Barium Titanate Language. Um, barium Titanate is a phase conjugate dielectric. It's how you reinvent batteries and therefore cars. It's just reinventing the whole thing. It's a fractal battery, infinite power, real cool stuff. And it makes a kind of electric field called phase conjugate or fractal. And that electric field, you have a cloud of it over here and a cloud of it over there, and it appears to locate itself at a distance, non-locally, magically, self-organizing, magic, plasmic stuff. And now we know this is exactly what comes from DNA when it implodes. If ever there was an introduction to the physics of Carl Jung's collective unconscious, and you can actually understand how this stuff gets made, implode, get fractal, phase conjugate, get distributable, and how then the DNA has got, you know, millions of years of history of gathering that part of a collective electric field that serves collective survival. Your intention. Well, it, another way of saying it is bliss has critical mass and it's contagious. Electrically. Kundalini causes headaches in the whole room. <laughs> you know, if you, if you, if, and this, this is the nature of plasma. You know, it's, it's about the why the shaman, he doesn't have tantra, then he gets two animals and holds them right here and here. And really, it works. And, th and this will do the same thing. These are phase conjugators. The same thing, you know, and if you do this. Anybody hasn't tried this, feel free to try this, yeah? So you just do it very slowly up to your ears. These are phase conjugate dielectrics. They're producing that. And when you hold them, you can feel that compression perfected, and your attention gets sharper. For the same reason that you see sharper when you sit under an old growth tree. Do you want to try? Just pass them around. And, and later we'll show you how to use, use these same uh, structures. I reproduced a 50% increase in fermentation rate. This is the electric field reason why Stonehenge causes seeds to germinate right there. 